Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I am so excited to film this video and I, I kind of feel overwhelmed. Okay, so today's topic is lip products for fall. Like ones that I'm craving, ones that I'm excited for, ones that make me think fall and give me fall vibes. Love that so much. But here's where I'm going to be completely honest with you. I did a video like this earlier and it was like the eyeshadow palettes I'm excited to use this fall. I'll put it in the description box down below. But it was easy. Like, okay, pick 10 and maybe a bonus one. Just like, just, and it was easy to do, to, to keep it to 10. It took me like maybe 10 minutes going through my stash, looking at everything and deciding this one, this one, this one. And then... I had to go through my lip products. And I I know, it's my favorite makeup item ever. You give me something for my lips and I'm like head over heels. So here I am with an inordinate amount of lip products. So I'm gonna try and get to them quickly because I don't know that I can, they're all my favorites. I can't just say no, no to you. <laughs> They're kind of split up into little groups here. I'm gonna start with what's on my lips right now. I have not been able to put this down since I got this. Now, I already love the Milani Fruit Fetish lip oils. I have one that's almost empty, but this is a different, like this feels like summer or this feels like early spring to me where it's bright, it's colorful, but sheer. But the minute I want something warm and toasty for fall, Hello, this is Blackberry Agave. Oh my goodness. So this formula is probably one of my, if not my favorite lip oil formula from the drugstore. I've been trying several. I like the one from NYX, the fat oil lip drip, but I have a shade that I don't love. This is what Blackberry Agave looks like. This is what it's like on the lips. This is a little bit kind of between, it's not as oily as other like traditional lip oils, but it's not a full on gloss, it's somewhere in the middle. But if you're looking for the easiest of easy, like you're rushing out the door, um, you're throwing on your sunglasses and a little bit of this, you're gonna be perfect. I love this. I have been wa wanting to pick up the rest of the shades from the new nudes line, because there's four shades in the nudes. I was like, no, 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 no. You don't need any more lip oils, you don't need any more lip products, and you'll see why in a minute. But I love that one. And this one has kind of, like risen straight to the top. I've been reaching for it nonstop. Kind of goes with everything, super easy. All right, this next lipstick is one that is kind of new to my collection. I think I got it spring or early summer and it's from Dior. This is their velvet lipstick and this is in the shade 100 nude look. This is one of my palest nudes. I normally don't go this kind of light and nude, but when I found this lipstick, I was like, wait, what? It's stunning. I love the formula of this. It does kind of have like a, a powdery scent to it, but it glides. It's so pretty on the lips. This is what nude look looks like on the lips. And here is a swatch of it right here. I really feel like this lipstick, now she's expensive, mid forties. Last time I checked $45, who knows? It could be 48 by now, I have no clue. But I like the way that this doesn't dry my lips out. It's also a really pale nude, but it has just a hint of pink to it. I mean, the smallest amount, you really can't tell on the lips, but it makes me look like, like a really soft and kind of blurry version of myself. And I like that. It's not too attention calling. It's perfect for when I have a heavy eye on or when I want just a little something and for it not to look too like bold and intense. If you like a softer lip and you like a luxury lip, you might really like the velvet formula from Dior. I want to get more, but my concern is with all the luxury lipsticks I have, they don't need any more brothers or sisters. <laughs> But, oh yeah, would I recommend this? 100%, this is beautiful, this formula. If this shade is not for you, go into a place that carries your swatch them, see what they feel like, see what they look like. And for me, it, it doesn't feel heavy. It feels like I almost don't have anything on my lips, but it's also not drying. And for a matte lipstick, that's really where. Just remember, if you are sensitive to scent, there is a scent to this. It's kind of a powdery, I don't know, It. it almost not quite baby powder, but it has that really powdery, slightly floral scent to it. Just keep that in mind. I have such a struggle with this next product. <laughs> this is the Generation G lipstick from Glossier. This is the shade Fuzz. Now, the reason I struggle with this, I love the formula 
for the way it looks on the lips. And I really love this color. Let me put it on for you. It looks like hardly anything on me, but that's why I love it. Here it is. It's so sheer. It, it, it is the essential kind of blotted lip. The reason I struggle with this is I'm 48. My lips need a little bit more moisture, a little bit more nourishment. I can wear this for a portion of the day and then I'm going to have to top it off with something hydrating and it's going to change the color. I wish there was a way to get this color and this feel with more moisture. I would have a ton more of these kind of um, blotted, hardly any lipstick sort of lipsticks if either my lips were hardier and they didn't need as much moisture as they did or if the formula was a little bit more nourishing. If you have dry lips, I feel like you might struggle with the Generation G, but I love how like almost hardly anything, it looks like almost nothing. And it's weird to say, here's a lipstick that I love that's almost nothing and I struggle with this and this and this, but the truth is I can't get rid of it. I did a lipstick declutter this last fall and early beginning of this year. I couldn't get, like couldn't let it go. My heart wouldn't let me let it go and it doesn't make sense to me and I don't understand it. If you love the Generation G Lipsticks from Glossier, which is your favorite shade, and then what is it about the formula that keeps you coming back? For me, it was this shade and how it feels so light on the lips. I just, my kingdom for a moisturizing sheer matte lipstick. Like that's what I want. This is giving everything but the moisture but I'm be reaching for this for fall. And once my lips get a little bit like, uh -huh, I'll put something over them to moisturize them or a heavy layer of balm and then this, but it's not quite the same when you get to wear it on its own, but she's stunning. I've had this next lipstick for a long time and I've always loved the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution formula. I know not everybody likes it, but this is so pretty. This is the shade Very Victoria. This is one of those that feels so elegant, that feels so understated, but is also so impactful. As I was putting this on, I just noticed something. I have it built up right here on my hand, but as I was putting one layer on, guess who feels like the next door neighbor, the Generation G and Fuzz? This one, the color is very similar. It's a little bit more, it's not too much. It's got a little bit of kind of a mauve tone to it, so it's not really pink, but it's not really like a, a, a true like nude shade, but she's so pretty. I also really like the way these smell. These definitely have like a sweet vanilla scent to them. Very light, hardly there, but I really like it. And I feel like the packaging is super cute and super elegant. This is one of those lipsticks though that I forget that I have until I start looking through. This is one that if I were to throw this in my purse, I might become addicted to it and use it all the way to the bottom because I feel like the shade on my skin tone goes with just about everything. Um, a bold eye, um, a really understated eye, like bright cheeks, like hardly anything. I could probably on a day when I've got concealer and nothing else on use this on cheeks and lips. Like this is like super versatile to me and I like this formula. This is one that doesn't necessarily impart moisture to my lips, but it doesn't dry them out. So whatever state my lips are in, if I keep them well hydrated, if I put this on at the beginning of the day and I reapply as needed throughout the day, my lips are gonna end up in that same state. It doesn't suck the life out of them. Um, and I love this color. I think that Very Victoria is gorgeous. This next lipstick is kind of new to my collection, but it's not a new formula. This is a formula I know I love and I keep coming back to, and it's the Merit lipstick. I love how carefully curated their color selection is. There are eight shades of this and I, okay, I have the limited edition one that you can't get right now, but I love this formula. This is so beautiful. This is the shade 1990. This is exactly what I would have longed for when I was in college in the 90s and everybody was wearing a brown lip because they were all too dark. They were too chocolate. They were too intense on my fair skin. And I was much fairer in college than I am now. But this is one that really reminds me of another lipstick. I'm gonna put this on first. Here's 1990. It is kind of like the coolest and the darkest of all of these kind of nudie sorts of lips. But what I love about this is I can wear it really sheer. I can kind of thin it out to hardly anything. It's really pretty, or I can wear it like layered on. And this has a subtle 
shine to it where it's not really glossy like a cream lipstick, but it's not completely matte. It, it has such a beautiful feel to it. It also um, feels emollient without being really kind of greasy and fine, finding all of those fine lines that I have. I'm 48, I do have those lines. Too many years of drinking through a straw. I don't know what I was thinking today. I was like, beverage, but no straw, no straw. <laughs> this is the sort of lipstick that feels so good on my lips. It is sheer. It isn't heavy. It has moisture without looking really shiny. I mean, you can build it up. I have it here um, recently built up, so it does have a little bit of shine to it, but when it's thinned out like it is down here, it is so easy. It's like a whisper of color. All of the lipsticks that I have in this formulation are such beautiful shades, um, but this is the one that I, I literally can't stop reaching for that I got recently, and I'm absolutely in love with it. If you're curious, I feel like it's very similar, just a hair cooler and maybe just a smidge darker. We're talking like 95% close to the Lisa Eldridge Meet Me in Berlin, which was last year this time, like my perfect brown. And I still love it and I still reach for it. And I, I feel like that formula is a little bit creamier, a little bit more moisturizing, but this is easier to get and it's $10 less expensive. They're so close. You, I don't think you need both of them in your collection. Now, me as a makeup addict and a YouTuber, it makes sense for me to have them, but I love this. And this is like my new kind of go-to for a brown lip. Loving this. The next group of lip products I wanted to talk about are ones that tend to have more of kind of like a really warm and kind of a rusty tone to them. I know that a lot of people love lip colors like that for fall. Here's one that I'm in love with. I don't know how I haven't like finished it yet, but this is the lip cushion from M Cosmetics. This is in the shade Van Gogh. I had to double check. I was about to call it something else, but it's the deeper of the two from the Masterpiece Collection. Has a little bit more terracotta to it. I love this. It, it went on a little heavy here. Um, it's a very soft formula. It's one of those that once you click it up, you can't really click it down. So I'm not wearing it quite this heavy on the lips. My lips are a lot softer than the back of my hand. The minute I put this on, it was like, I was like, oh, too much, too much, darling. Um, but this is a beautiful, glowy, hydrating, very nourishing lip product. Oh my goodness. I do have the other one from the Masterpiece Collection. I think this one is uh, Mona Lisa. It is, this is Mona Lisa. And she's pretty, but she's like an almost not there lip product where it's so nude. It's so almost just barely your lips. If you want a little bit more color and a slightly warmer, a little bit more terracotta lean to it, this one right here in Van Gogh is for you. Would it be a lip recommendation video if I did not pull out some Lisa Eldridge lipsticks? This is a luxuriously lucent in the shade Spirited Away. This is one of the easiest shades. I have this with me so frequently. I'll find it in my purse. I'll find it in my pants pocket. I'll find it like next to my bedside, like I'm emptying my pockets for the day and I find it there. I love this lipstick. This is Spirited Away. This is what it looks like. It has just a little bit more of a redness to it, but it's not a red lipstick. To me, it definitely has a little bit of that. I'm looking at it from afar. Um, it has a little bit of that earthiness. It has a little bit of rustiness, but it does have some color without being overpowering. And on my fair skin, things can get very contrasty really quick. I don't wear a lot of black eyeshadow because it's a lot of contrast. I don't wear a lot of really deep berry lipsticks because it's a lot of contrast. I have to kind of walk kind of like middle of the line. I feel like this lip color would look perfect on almost any skin tone because it's just a little bit and it's not too much. This is such a gorgeous formula and if you like something that's sheer and lightweight and it's not too lip sticky, I feel like that's what the luxuriously lucent formula is so good for. But this color in Spirited Away really reminds me of fall, although I wear this one all year round. This next one from Lisa Eldridge is Velvet Affair. This is definitely more of a rusty, almost terracotta shade, but it is the true velvet formula. So this is one of those um, kind of matte lipsticks, but has this amazing ability to moisturize and feel good on my lips. I mean, come on. Isn't this just stunning? Here's Velvet Affair. This true velvet formula I feel like I just put a balm on my lips. I'm gonna be like, let me just show you my little wipe here. It's 
kind of a shame. It's full of lip products. I've been wiping my lips. They're gonna get a little aggravated and annoyed with me throughout the process of this. But what's so incredible to me is that a matte lipstick is so comfortable on the lips. I, I don't know what it is about these True Velvets from Lisa Eldridge. I feel like the colors, the nuanced colors are so gorgeous. I love this one for fall. But beyond that, the feel of it, it's, it's remarkable how good it feels. And remember, I've got really finicky, persnickety lips. You know, they're old. They've got those fine lines around the edges. Um, I need something that's going to not just add moisture, but also not make my lips look more textured. And this matte lipstick, some of them are just not forgiving on mature lips. And this one really is beautiful. It's also really pretty if you decide to kind of thin it out. I just took a minute to kind of go over my lips and pick up any excess lip color, but I like how this feels even lighter weight, but it doesn't feel drying. I really think this formula is kind of a little bit of magic, and on top of that, this color in Velvet Affair is really gorgeous for fall. The last lipstick in kind of this rusty tones here is from YSL. This is their Bold Lipstick, and this one is in the shade 10. This one is called Brazen Nude. And this is one that when I first got it, I was like, I don't know. And then I saw it on myself while I was editing a video and I was like, ooh, hello. So I'm excited to wear this as well. This is beautiful. This is a very orange leaning lipstick. If you're not an orange kind of person, keep that in mind. But what I love about this is that is one swipe. You can build this up, but you kind of don't need to. This has a really beautiful creamy, silky formula. It feels so good on the lips. If you like something that is shiny but is not gonna find all of those lines and go everywhere, I really love this new formula from YSL. I wanna get a few more. I have three of these and I just keep looking for like, when can I get another, when can I get another? But it needs to be the right shade. Um, I don't find that there's any scent to these, which is interesting because I feel like some of the other YSL lipsticks that I have really do have a scent, but I really love this one here in shade number 10, Brazen Nude. It's beautiful, but it's very much a warm, toasty, orange leaning lip. This next lip category is the one I know I should have cut down. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And it's kind of more like the mauve berry tones. This is of course a shade I wear all year long, but there are certain formulations that remind me of fall and there are certain tones that find me, remind me of fall. First one I wanna share with you is such an affordable option at the drugstore. It can sometimes be hard to find because everybody loves this shade. This is from e.l.f. This is their Sheer Slick Lipstick and this is the shade Black Cherry. I feel like this lipstick goes with everything. This really reminds me, I feel like it's the best alternative or affordable version of the Clinique Black Honey Almost Lipstick. I feel like that's what this is trying to do. And when I purchased it, it was $5. Who knows what it is anymore? Like inflation is <laughs> so like changing constantly. I don't know. Um, but I really love how this feels creamy and comfortable on the lips. I've been wiping a lot of lip products off and my lips are like, <laughs> please stop. And I'm like, we're not done yet. Um, but this feels so good. This is also one of those that I can throw on at a stop sign. Or if I'm, um, you know, sitting someplace in a meeting when I just need to quickly like swipe something on, I don't want to pull a mirror out or pull my phone out. This, I don't have to worry about it looking weird if it actually, because I feel like it never really kind of goes where I don't need it to go. Super easy, really affordable, beautiful all year long, but especially when I'm excited to wear it this fall. Got another Merit lipstick for you. This is the first one I ever got and I, I love it. This is the shade Baby. It's kind of like a light mauve lipstick that masquerades as a nude. It is super comfortable. I realized I forgot to <laughs> swatch the e.l.f. for you. This is Black Cherry. Here is Baby from Merit. This goes on and you can either like really layer it on like I have it right now, or it can be a little bit more of a light wash or one where you kind of take it and dab it on your lips. This looks beautiful every which way I wear it. I love this so much. I mean like, I don't wanna quit looking at it. When you have as many lipsticks as I do, it's really hard to finish a lipstick, but I'll tell you the minute that I start like getting into where the monogram is on the lipstick, when it has the brand name there and you can only see part of the word, 
I have used this lipstick a lot. This is one of those that I feel if I'm wearing something that needs a little bit of grounding, I'll reach for this. If I want something that's kind of easy and I don't have to worry about it, no babysitting necessary, this one. But I also really love it when I'm wearing cool toned cheeks and eyes because it's not too strong, but it is cool toned. Really, really love babies, such a fave. I have loved these fetish matte lipsticks from Milani since they came out. And this shade here in Secret is probably the one that I reach for the most. Here's what Secret looks like on. Here it is right here, swatched. This is such a, a beautiful formula. This is one of those, although I do love the packaging, I like how it catches the light. I feel like it has a nice feel to it. But if you were to take the bullet out of this and put it in a luxury component, I wouldn't balk at paying $35, $40 for this formula. It feels like a luxury formula. It really, really does. Um, I feel like this is such a good formula at an affordable price. If you're looking for a matte lipstick, one that's gonna hang tight all day, one that's not gonna find all those little craggles on the edges of your lips and kind of go places, um, one that's not gonna dry you out and that has really beautiful colors, I love this matte fetish line from Milani. Really can't recommend it enough. I have had a love affair with Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks since my very first one. This one here is Am I Kiss. This is such a beautiful shade for fall. It's a berry tone without being too dark. Here's Am I Kiss. This is what it looks like on the lips. I really, I forget, I have so many lipsticks. There are some that are kind of front and center and I reach for regularly, but I forget how good these are. When I was going through my collection, I was like, I need some Charlotte Tilbury. This one is really good. I just gave this a blot and I think it looks stunning still. I am so glad to have remembered my love of Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. And they're not the newest in my collection. I've had them for a long time, but definitely ones I'm excited to wear this fall. Got another Lisa Eldridge for you. This is a luxuriously lucent. This is the shade Painterly. Man, just putting this on makes me wanna wear it all the time. So here is Painterly. This is it on the lips. Not only do I love the luxuriously lucent formula because it's so comfortable, it's so easy, it's effortless, but there's something about this lipstick here, the color, it's got some brown to it, it's got some earthiness to it. It has some of that mauve tone, but it's not too pink or too purple. It is grounded in such a stunning way. It goes with almost anything. I mean, just looking at this is like, it's, it's a statement lip, without really being a statement lip. And if I were to blot this, you would see it does the same thing that the one from Charlotte does. It looks good both ways, like full force and blotted down. I I feel like this is one that I've been, um, yeah. <laughs> Remember what I told you about the Merit lipsticks is that the minute I'm starting to lose the imprint on the lipstick, they're the ones that I've reached for the most. And this one in Painterly, oh my goodness, a fave a fave for fall. I fell in love with the So Soft Velvet Lip Creams last fall when they launched from M Cosmetics, but they came out with a new shade this fall <gasps> that has me, heart and soul. This is the shade Hush. It is a whipped, moussey formula, and this is kind of like a soft, um, it's not really like a berry berry, but ah, uh, so beautiful. Here is the shade Hush. This feels almost like a balm on the lips, not in a, not in kind of a velvety slippy way, but kind of in a plush cushy way. This has a beautiful feel on the lips to it, but it's not at all like hydrating and oily, but it still imparts moisture. I don't know, this feels kind of like a, a, an ethereal, like mystical thing. Like I don't really know where to put this. It doesn't really feel like a lipstick. It doesn't really feel like a lip balm. It, it has um, a really fabulous applicator on there. It's designed to look like your finger, but it, it pulls out just the right amount. I don't know. There was one day where, I'll be honest, I had neglected putting on a lip sleeping mask. Um, I think my jar of Laneige had rolled off my nightstand and as I got in bed, I normally reached for it and I couldn't find it. I was like, oh, just go to sleep, you're tired. And I woke up the next morning and my lips were not happy. And I've been wanting to wear these guys and I pulled one out and I just plopped it on after I got my makeup done. And I just kept reapplying it throughout the day. And my, my lips, sometimes a matte formula will kind of 
make my lips drier or more like ugh, problematic or you'll start to see the lines or the flakes that didn't happen i don't know it was weird it was like wait what it was it was beautiful because this formula because it is moussey because it is soft i thought it was going to kind of land and settle in places and kind of emphasize the dryness it didn't it is so such a beautiful formula and I love the shades. This new one in Hush is definitely a fade for fall. I had to pull out this Gucci lipstick. This is one that I struggled to find the right shade. My local Sephora does not carry Gucci in store so I had to order something from the website and it was not the right shade. But this shade is called Peggy Taupe. This is a beautiful, really pretty um, deep kind of mauve tone that is very much a statement deep but muted at the same time lip for fall. It has a beautiful coolness to it. It also has a fabulous, such a comfortable like matte formula. It feels a little bit more, slightly more emollient than the one from Dior. Like this one here, the velvet formula feels a little bit more like a like a soft and plushy. And not that this isn't soft and plushy, but I can feel the hydration in this. I don't know what it is. Some of these higher end matte formulas, they have the ability to make my lips look better while still being matte. That to me is a little bit of alchemy that I love. This shade in Peggy Taupe is beautiful. And I mean, come on. It's one of the most stunning packages in my entire lip collection. Last shade and kind of like this uh, mauve kind of berry tones is, this is so much darker. This is another Lisa Eldridge. This one's called Night Thoughts. Talk about a statement lip. I love this one so much. I'm gonna have to put it across the bottom because I'm running out of space, but this is Night Thoughts. I love this when it's just barely, barely on where it's like hardly anything. I don't know if it's as noticeable, but like I took a, the bulk of it off my bottom lip, but I still have the layer that I applied straight from the bullet on the top. This is one of those that I like to put on and then just kind of smush in, either by rubbing my lips together or going over it with a finger to kind of take down some of the heavy pigment. I shouldn't say heavy pigment, it's not heavy, but when it looks like it's kind of lived in, it's kind of my favorite way to wear it. So although it does look beautiful like this, I like it best when it's a little bit more like this. Oh, I love this shade. Last grouping of lipsticks are reds. And these, okay, you may not think of red lipstick as low maintenance, but I picked kind of like some of my lowest maintenance reds. Ones that give me like a variety of tones, but also are easy to wear. I don't have to babysit these. I can slap these on and go. Um, I love the way they wear. I love the way they make my lips feel. And I love the tones because they're none of them are like that bright candy apple or fire engine red. Um, they're, they're very easy and approachable as far as a red lip goes. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is from Victoria Beckham. This is the shade Pop. This is the Posh Lipstick. And I know it's, she started out with nothing but nudes and I, I like the look of them, but I, I wanted to swatch them and see what they look like on my skin tone before purchasing. But the minute she came out with the red, I was like, sold, absolutely. Okay, I know you're looking at me going, that doesn't look low maintenance. Okay, the reason I say a low maintenance lipstick, one that is not gonna find all the lines and go everywhere. One that if my hair gets in there and I pull it off and I have like a little trail of color outside of my lips, I can do this and it's gone and it doesn't stain. Um, one that I don't have to worry about getting on my teeth. There's no nothing worse than wearing like a bright lipstick. And when you smile, like having stuff everywhere and then trying to get it off your teeth and not being able to. There are some lipsticks that I have to actually get floss to get the color out from in between. Because once it gets between my lips and on my gums, it's like, there's no getting it other than a toothpick or a piece of floss. And I literally, I literally have to floss it out. This is comforting. It is nourishing. It is hydrating. It makes my lips look better, but it's not one of those that I have to worry that it's in places where it doesn't belong or that it's starting to trail out places. This is such a beautiful formula. And if you like are worried about a maybe a pigmented lipstick. I like that it comes in a thinner kind of tube. This makes it so easy and so precise. I feel like maybe the older I get, the more I'm gonna need reds that come in slimline kind of skinnier packaging just for precision. But I love this shade and pop. 
I love a blue red, but nothing makes me happier than a warm red. And here's one from Gucci. This is Red Odaly. This is shade number 500. Oh my goodness, so pretty. This is the satin formula. So it's this comes also in like the matte formula like I showed you earlier. But this is the easiest warm red. And I usually don't just put it everywhere. I'll kind of like tap it on my upper or my lower lip and then I'll smush my lips together so I don't get too much of it. Um, you can certainly build this up, use a lip liner, get it really shiny, but the way I like to wear this and how I feel it works best for me in kind of a more unassuming way is to put it on one lip, smush my lips together and just kind of blur everything together. So I love this more kind of tomato leaning red. I'm not swatching these. Oh, I'm being bad today. There's Victoria Beckham and Pop. There's the Gucci and Red Odalie. You can see one is definitely more orange. One is definitely a cooler red. But I, I feel like both of these have that ability where they're a, a satiny kind of creamy formula where it doesn't have to be as opaque. And that's really what I like about it. It's such a pretty color and I like wearing both cool and warm tones in the fall. I have another one of the new shades from M. Oh my goodness, I love this. This is the red shade called Flirt. They're describing it as a muted red, and for that reason alone, I feel like it's perfect for this time of year. Um, I feel like a red works any time of year. If you're wanting something that is a little bit more dialed down and not too punchy, I feel like this can give it to you. At this point, I'm not gonna keep applying from the applicator because there's more product on there. I'm gonna smush my lips together. I love this. I love this so much. This one makes me so happy. This is such an easy shade to wear. I don't really have to worry about it. Um, it feels really good. My lips are, are really going through it. Like I'm on what lipstick number 20 or 21 by this point. Um, I've been wiping them down, but this feels really comfortable on my lips. And I know that come like colder weather when my lips need a little boost of moisture, I could safely reach for this and it would not only provide moisture, but color as well. The last lipstick I'm gonna leave you with is one of my new fades from Lisa Eldridge. This is the shade Velvet Enchantment. So she describes this as kind of like the red that you would see in like a storybook, like a fairy tale. This is Velvet Enchantment, it's beautiful. Um, this is the swatch right here, but I always love it when it is a little bit blurred out, a little bit softened, um, where it's not like worn, like fully opaque. There will be times that I'll just kind of pat this on um, in a couple of places and then blur the rest of it with my finger. I've been doing a lot of that. I don't know if it's because uh, I'm kind of leaning into the fact that my <laughs> lips are lined and, you know, product sometimes makes it outside of like that vermilion border. And I'm trying to just embrace that, yeah, I've got a little bit of fuzzy lipstick going on or whether it's that I really am loving that blurred line. Um, I do really feel like this is a beautiful lipstick. It looks great when it's really crisp and precise, but my favorite part about it is it's not like that bright, like bright traditional red that you would see on like a Disney villain, like an Ursula or um, the Queen in Snow White, or even Snow White's lips. Like this is a very different kind of red, even though it's described as a fairy tale red or a storybook red, it feels like it has just a little bit more earthiness to it. So it's not bright and right there. It's super easy. I love the True Velvet formulas and you know I love a red lip, but this one is just so pretty, so easy to wear and absolutely stunning. Thanks so much for watching today. I, I feel kind of bad that <laughs> I couldn't thin it down. I couldn't like put some of these back and say, I'm not talking about these today because these are literally the lipsticks. If I were to put them all in a container and keep them like right here on my vanity, I don't know that I would really need to reach for anything else. I have pinks, I have browns, I have reds, I have warm rusty tones. I have a variety of formulas from mattes to lip oils and glossy lipsticks and I don't know, high maintenance and low maintenance lips. I feel like I kind of have it all here. But this, this is literally my favorite makeup category. You give me a lip product, oh, my heart will beat forever. Um, so thank you so much for watching today. Let me know, do you have a specific color family that you reach for a lot in fall? Um, do you feel like you actually change your lip options based on the seasons? I obviously do, but not everybody does. Um, and if you're curious, I will link in the description box below the video I did previously about fall eyeshadow palettes. And let me know what sort of makeup products you're really craving this season. 
Um, or if it's just kind of like I wear the same thing all the time, let me know that as well. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day and I will see you again soon.